Christmas. It's the time of year when we focus our attention on the birth of Christ, our Savior. You know, the birth of the Messiah had been prophesied for thousands of years, and yet the people that were involved in the Christmas story, they were caught by surprise. Because, see, they had some preconceived ideas of how the Savior should come, of how the Messiah should come. And because of that, they almost missed the blessings of God. Sound familiar? You know, oftentimes we do the same thing. We, we ask God to work in our lives. We want God to do miracles in our lives. And yet, sometimes we put God in a box expecting him and wanting him to work in maybe some preconceived ideas that we've come up with. So how do we react when our expectations are not met? Can we lay those expectations aside just long enough maybe for God to do something in our lives totally unexpected? Well, that's what happened in some characters that we're going to look at today. These people lived over 2,000 years ago, and yet the challenges that they faced were as relevant as if they lived today. Watch. There is a silent partner that arrives with one's first child, and every mother is acquainted with it. Worry. You see, when one is young, one prays. And when one becomes a mother, one burns the midnight oil. You know what I speak of. My back and my hip, gifts from my first child. Mary, she was such an easy child. And then she met this quiet young man, a carpenter. He was a nice enough young man, but her father and I did worry that he would be able to provide, although that soon became the least of our worries. Mary came to me quietly one morning, talking of angels and of God and trying to explain this child, this baby that she had conceived. Now mind you, every Jewish girl wanted to give birth to the one. But this story? A child out of wedlock? I could hardly bear to listen. How could she lie to me? Her own mother. What have you done? What have you done? I said to her over and over. I screamed it. Words that haunt me every day. But this, this is how I greeted the long-awaited Savior of our people. And then, when I understood, no, when I believed, an ecstasy spilled out of me. It had been there this whole time. <laughs> I was to be the grandmother of the Messiah. I'm not quite sure what I expected after that. 
maybe a more suitable birth plan for a king and his mother. <laughs> but what do I know? I know this. The very first thing I said to my sweet Mary is what have you done? Such a useless question. What I should have said is let's see what God can do. Yes, yes indeed. What God has done. pop up this way about him. It used to make me so angry. I come to him with an idea. It could be big or small. It was always something I thought that could have very well improved this place around here. But every time, every single time, I, he would just, he would, like he was reminding me of something, he would just pat me on the shoulder, say, thank you, son, and be on his way. That was his way. You see, Pop didn't like people knowing this, but he couldn't read. So I ended up doing the reading for him. One day he brought me a notice that was nailed to the front of our door. The government was calling for a census. I didn't need to finish the thing before I knew what it meant. It meant that people from all over were going to come around in droves needing places to stay. I said, Pop, we got things to do. We got, we got to expand our floor print. Uh, this, this place is only going to hold but a few people. I even drew up a whole business plan with a budget and everything, trying to push for a profit in every corner I could to make the changes happen. Because I knew this was, my, this was my moment. This was my chance to become the innkeeper. I was 14. Pop just patted me on the shoulder said, thank you, son, and went on his way. Soon enough, the time for the census came, and sure enough, people from all over were coming, were coming to our small little town of Bethlehem. And where was, I, where was I in this great business venture? I was washing the linens, weeping the floors, and cleaning the stables. And that's exactly where I was when they, when they came in. I was just shoveling the stable when in comes this man and his poor wife. She was, she was great with child. And Pop had told these, these people he, they could stay in the barn. Had he lost his mind? Has he seen what I can, I'm trying to clean up here? There's no place for people to stay, much less people in their state because she's in pain, he's panicking, the chickens are panicking, I'm panicking because I can see the baby's coming. And it's coming right now. So what did I do in this moment? I was 14. I, I didn't know what to do. I just, I, I, I froze. I just stood there and watched. And then in came Pop. He was carrying blankets. And he had water. And he was taking care of them. He was doing what he always did. He was saving me. And that night, he saved them too. Pop was a hero that night. You can never convince him of it. I remember talking to him one day about it. So I told him that, Pop, you were a real hero that night. He, and he just said, no, son, all I did was make a room that night. 
the real hero was Jesus. He came down to save us all. friend let's see if we can finish sanding you today she has been on my case about you for weeks now that woman mary what would we do without her and to think there was a time when i was asking myself something altogether different what am i going to do with her i was just trying to understand it all but really, what was there to understand? She was pregnant, and she swore over and over and over that it wasn't as it seemed. But I knew it didn't matter. It was only a matter of time. People in town started to question who she'd been with, my friends all thought I'd been duped. And the looks they gave us, the rumors, so many rumors. And all justifiable, every bit of it, because who would believe a story like that, right? An angel. <sighs> hmm. Hmm. An angel. I, I would go to her parents' house and sit with her on the floor, away from the windows and the looks. And I would say, tell me again, Mary, and tell me word for word what the angel said to you. And she would repeat the same thing every time, like it had been seared into her. He shall be great and shall be called son of the highest. That's what she whispered back, the angel told her. An angel. You'd think these calluses wouldn't grab a splinter after all these years. But sometimes the right one hmm, manages to get through. Kind of like the dream I had. When every bone God built me with wanted to doubt her, he sent an angel to me to get through. Look at you, ready to do what you do best. You have two jobs. You keep people out, or you let people in. Hmm. That's the deal, isn't it? When God stands at the door and knocks, we can let him in, or we can keep him out. Those are the only options. And it took everything, everything to let you in. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful for opening that door.
Tony and I have a rhythm and routine in this humble house, and that morning he was messing it up. See, he comes in at 7.12 on the nose every morning. I hear his boots at the floor. I make the coffee. He washes the pasture off him, and we take our toast to the patio. It's our thing. He's a quiet man, likes the one word answers that one. And then he's off to bed. He watches the sheep at night. Oh, how my parents looked at me when I said I had fallen in love with the shepherd boy. But that's a story for another time. Or never. But that morning, there were no boots. It was quiet. Quiet, like my husband. But before I could get to the front door, it slammed. It was loud. It was different. It was like the door knew something I didn't know. My husband yells for me. He yells for me. Maybe he's hurt. Maybe he's lost the herd. He's out of breath. He's saying my name as he holds my face in his hands, eyes full of fear. No, awe, tears running down his face, and he won't stop talking, ranting about a light that came down from the sky. And angels? Yes, that's what I said. Angels, hundreds of them in the field, all proclaiming the good news? What did he mean? Good news. Now I know. My husband will never hold the scepter of a king, never sit with dignitaries and solve the world's problems, never be invited to a dinner where he has to wear a suit. But that night, he was given the greatest edict in all the land, in all the world, actually. He was called to the front lines by God himself, called to proclaim the good news so that all ears may hear. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. And it shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I can say it in my sleep. I can see it sometimes too. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards man. God was pleased with my husband, the shepherd. His boots hit the floor a little later these days, and that's okay. He's telling anyone who will listen the good news. With kings, you show reverence, humility, honor. But I had no intentions of doing that with this child. We weren't seeking out a Messiah. We were just seeking to satisfy a curiosity. You, you understand. A plus B equals C. So this curiosity led my companions and I to find this so-called king. I must admit, I am not a man led by emotions, skeptical at the most. <laughs> my comrades say, cynical. 
maybe they're right. I go by logic. Maps, stars, books, history. So we followed the star and we found the woman and the husband and the boy they called Jesus in Bethlehem. Yes, I was expecting to see a child, but there he was, the boy that drove Herod mad, the boy that had command over angels, the boy who lured shepherds from their flocks, the boy that claimed to be the Messiah. Like I said, I, a king in my own right, had no intentions of bowing to this child. I was bound only by curiosity. But then I saw him. I felt, I felt a fascination, something more, something unmistakable. I saw divinity. From the beginning of time, kings would go about showing their great births, but this king's birth was announced by prophets long before he ever took his first earthly breath. Kings would go around their lands and they would show their triumphs and their valors, but this king said nothing. Angels spoke for him. I think of him every day, how I went out trying to ease my curiosity and I found something that I didn't even know that I needed, that I needed a Messiah. clap now. That was good, wasn't it? Amen. <clears throat> Give them all another round of applause. They did a tremendous job today. All the people in the back, all those that are supporting and our ministry of media and sound, and uh, thank you so very, very much for, for all. And uh, thank you, production team, Mike Meyer, Amy, and the whole crew. Thank you again. Give them a round of applause and praise the Lord for all that you have witnessed. You have had the opportunity to witness something this morning. Join me in Luke 1 for just a few minutes as part of an introduction. And, and of course, uh, this morning, uh, we are uh, at a place where two weeks from now, it'll be the day after Christmas. So, of course, two weeks from yesterday, uh, You'll be in a place of celebrating uh, Christmas time, and uh, I know uh, we're not going to go into the logistics of the time frame of everything, but truly we know that it's a wonderful time of the year for the most important part that we recognize, and that's the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. You witnessed so very much, you witnessed his majesty, and... Uh, I'm thankful again for uh, the creativity of people that can put something together and portray something. Give us maybe a, a little, uh, a little uh, script, uh, five skits. A production team takes that. There's so much that goes into it, though. And uh, then you have these uh, incredible characters that are speaking of the majesty of the Lord. If you think about what it says in Luke, uh, go in Luke chapter 1, you're there. Look around verse number 23. It came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. Of course, that was Zacharias and all that was tied together with Elizabeth. Verse 24, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me. Of course, we know that she is carrying John. We find then, of course, a little bit further down, verse 26, the sixth month, of, uh, sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, Nazareth, 
a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And there, of course, unfolds the great message that is in verse number 30. And, of course, she is at a place of, uh, she's troubled and everything. And the angel says, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And again, everything begins to unfold. The first character, of course, uh, Grandma Mary, uh, Mom of Mary. And you see, obviously, a portrayal there. And of course, much more continues to go on. He shall be great, of course, called Jesus, verse 32, the call, called the Son of the Highest. And each one of these pieces and parts are intertwined into the drama in each one of the, the skits. And of course, again, it goes down, Mary and Elizabeth visit, verse 37, a very famous verse in the Bible, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And again, Mary arose in those days in the hill of the country with haste in the city of Judah. And, and again, there's the visit of Mary and Elizabeth continues down a little bit further and of course you hear that statement uh, so profound verse 45 and blessed is she that is believed for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord and Mary said my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior Mary did you know of course that song was sung last week by uh, Madison Fredenberg, what a beautiful account. Of course, it continues going on and on. And you see, of course, Luke chapter number 1. And you see everything going on. Zacharias, Elizabeth, all that. And we see, of course, the account of John growing up. And then Jesus being born and growing up. And we have all, I mean, we have all these things. And, of course, unfolds to chapter number 2, the Christmas story, which will save for a couple weeks from now, but each one of you um, think about that and you think, oh, okay, it's Christmas time. What's in the Bible? So everybody's going to go home this week and see if they can find the mother of Mary in there and see if they found grandma. Maybe you can find the innkeeper's son in the Bible. I don't know. You think you can find him? In the accounting in the Bible, there is so very much that is enough to digest. But when you have that opportunity, as Rick Adams introduced the whole storyline, he just, you know, really made it clear that when you start thinking about all that went on at that time, 2,000 years ago, and everyone that knows anything of God's plan for the ages and has heard any Jewish teaching, of prophecy from the Old Testament. There is a Messiah that's coming. There's a Messiah that's coming. There's a Messiah that's coming. And it's going to be His Majesty. It's going to be Majestic Jesus. And that's who they talked about here. The birth of Jesus comes, of course, comes on. And that's where you see everything unfolded with, again, innkeeper. Then you've got, if you went to Matthew 2, then you've got the idea of how it comes about that the wise men showed up. And when they showed up, for some of you that know the answer, amen. If some of you don't, go look it up and you'll figure out. Study the Bible, you'll know when the wise men came to see this baby who was a child, who was a little boy. You see, again, there's so much to be spoken of. And one of the things that lands that is going to come in here is the idea that these people portrayed here on the stage were witnesses of something. They witnessed his majesty. And today, just for a moment, I want you to consider, just physically speaking, not imaginatively speaking, but physically you witnessed the grandeur of the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you witnessed the grandeur of God in this, and some of you say, well, that was just nice, and I hope I can find a video that portrays it better or something more exciting. I need to have Star Wars, I need to have Marvel, I need to have... You and I just need to stop and realize that what you saw in just 20 minutes here was the revelation of his majesty. You witnessed his majesty. Everything pointed to Jesus Christ. Everything. 
You say, well, they're just play acting some parts. Where they're just, you know, I just wish that they, you know what? Wish they what? I wish that we would awaken a little bit more to the majesty of God. You see, even to think of him as being majesty means you need to think about what you witness today. Witness majesty? No, that was just a few people came out here. There was cutting flowers. They were sweeping up the stage a little bit. They did pretty good. Did you know that every one of them messed up their lines like ten times? Did you know that? I'm just joking. They were all beautiful. You see, you wouldn't even know. Unless you were looking for something like that. You see, Mary didn't mess up her lines. Joseph didn't mess up his lines. The shepherd did not mess up his lines. The angel did not mess up anything. They were called by God to fulfill an incredible place in history. To orchestrate the birth and all that surrounded them of majesty. Worship his majesty. Remember that song? Be all glory and honor and praise majesty. Worship his majesty. You see, we witnessed something today. Witness? Sometimes you say, witness something. You did. You witnessed something today. You witnessed something this morning that was so beautiful. There was song, people singing beautiful praises and, 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 and everything that goes around that. And you're saying, well, uh, uh, well, I don't, uh, uh, let me give it a, 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 a let me, ten, let me see, I'll give it a four out of five. I'll give it a, that's not, whoa. we're so caught up in spending time about what's actually going on in the carnal and the temporal that we miss the heavenly message of what God wants us to witness. He wants you to witness his glory, his majesty, his grandeur, his goodness, his beauty in all things that are of him. We gather in the name of Jesus by the word of God. And believers in the Holy Spirit, this makes it beautiful. We name the name of Jesus. I heard that where two or three are gathered in my name, he'll be in the midst. And you and I, we witness beautiful things constantly. To witness is to see or to know by personal experience, to attest, to give testimony, to testify, to give evidence by the time I'm done here in just a few minutes with our short message this morning, I want you to consider that you've witnessed something, now you need to witness it to others. That not that the message of the gospel? Isn't that the good news? After witnessing this drama through a series of skits, will you tell others what you experienced today? I'm really confused when people tell me they can't find any way of starting a conversation with someone about Jesus Christ. I really am confused about that. Because they can shut you down rather quickly, but you could say, you get into work on Monday. Now, everybody loves Monday, right? You love Monday? All those that are retired, say amen. amen. You, gosh, a lot of you are retired. Holy moly. Whew. Wow. It's looking better all the time. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd lose my mind. What did you do yesterday? What, what's been going on? Well, I don't know. I sat around the house. My wife was cranky pants. She was just miserable. I don't know what I'm going to do with her. Well, you've been married for 40 years. What's your problem? Well, and that's how you have a conversation. Oh, my husband, he is a, oh, my, you have no, it's like Courtney up here. <laughs> That's a story for another time. I went to church yesterday, and these precious people at my church put on this little drama for 20 to 25 minutes. This young guy got up before that, and he sung, Oh, Holy Night. Uh, 
I'll answer that phone for you if you want me to. There's so much going on today. Hallelujah. It's time of prayer. Amen. It's a, Dwayne, it's a lot lighter than that first. Or I don't know. I don't want to compare, but you know. But here's the thing. You and I are witnessing. We're seeing things of God. God is alive. God is, a, God is at work. We need to go witness that to other people. You witness something beautiful today, go and tell people. It'll get you right into a conversation about the Lord Jesus Christ. It will be about his majesty. I never seen a part where somebody talked to me about what that wise man was thinking when he went off to see Jesus. He talked of divinity. Points right back to the scriptures. Well, they portrayed Mary's mom. They portrayed the shepherd's wife. They portrayed, are they in the box? No, but here's the deal. Will the witness of the majesty of Jesus Christ be quiet in you? Will it be kept quiet in you? I ache in my bones. As the years move on, and I have hardly any time left, how much time did I waste not seeing the majesty of God, of witnessing his majesty, of his beautiful majesty? Oh, we'll get to heaven and we'll be, yeah, I know, but I heard from a preacher a long time ago, this is just rehearsal for glory one day. Why don't we start doing it right now? But we can praise and have honor and glory for him. Majesty. Think of that word. Think of, I should have put it on like 300 point type. Majesty. Majesty. Worship his majesty unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty. Kingdom authority. Flow from his throne unto his own. His anthem raised. Majesty. Worship his majesty. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus, magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King, majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, king of all kings, a sweet little hymn just written 40 years ago. It's not even that old. You know what? The def definition of a word really helps you. In the Strong's definitions, it says, and this is one of those that sits right up, and I looked at chronicles and I was looking at Psalms I was looking at some Old Testament stuff and I'm going this is an old Hebrew word meaning hoed from an unused root grandeur impose an imposing form and appearance beauty comeliness excellency glorious glory goodly honor majesty that's good stuff see that's the meaning of majesty now let me ask you again as I've dove into a book recently that I went through many years ago that just reminds me of something that's really deeply missing in so many of us. The true and proper and right concept of holy God. What is your thought of God? What does your mind and your heart think of? What is your imagination of God going? Because the carnal, vain imaginations, those high things that exalt themselves against God, they're awful. Do you see God in grandeur as an imposing form and appearance, beauty, comeliness, excellency, glory? Oh, majesty. Worship his majesty. Go to Hebrews chapter number one for a moment real quick. There's a number in uh, many, many, many places where you'll find majesty in the Bible. We are witnessing his majesty. We did today. And in Hebrews 1, we find the mention of majesty in reference to holy God and the Lord Jesus Christ here in the first four verses. I've got verse number three up there on the screen. But in verse one, it says, God, Hebrews 1, verse 1, God who has sundry times and divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, sent his son, born, lived, died, raised from the dead, 
In these last days, spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir unto all th- of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3, who being the, I love, this is good stuff who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the capital M, majesty on high, being made so much lower, excuse me, so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent, Name than they. Majesty God, majesty Jesus, majesty. Worship his majesty. That's who he is. Majesty translates to greatness. Divinity. It's truly deity driven in its word. And yet people will bow down to a king or queen on this earth, a prince or a princess, and that's fine to give them honor. As the wise man said, honor and humility. But again, I go to see a baby who is a child. I'm not going to bow before him. Oh yes, you will bow down before him. When you think of witness his majesty today and how you witness his majesty, Think of those characters here. Think of each part that they played. I just want to take a few minutes this morning, just a simple, simple recapping, and then look at just a little scripture that tied together to each one of them from the book of Psalms. I still love that book of Psalms where it exalts and extols the name of God. It holds him majestically high. It is a place where he is filled with grandeur. Witness his majesty. What a great, great little message through the people that really were supposedly witnesses, that were around, who knows, but it really again points to the majesticness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember the mother of Mary? That's our first one. She witnessed a daughter and car- that carried in her womb his majesty. mother of Mary had a daughter who carried in her womb his majesty. Every parent here who was a grandparent would say, wow, the grandchildren, they're so beautiful. They're so incredible. They do no wrong. They never sin. Isn't it great? Yes. You little kids never sin. It's so beautiful. Yes. But here's a quote from mother of Mary that I loved in there. But when I finally understood... When I finally believed, an ecstasy spilled out of me. Had it been there this whole time? I was to be the grandmother of the Messiah. Wow, what a thought. It says in Psalm 8, and there, there's many, many Psalms in this, but I, I really just kind of read and studied many of them like I often do in preparing, just looking through some of the passages that tied together with majesty. It says in verse number one of Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the glory above the heavens. That word translated similarly to the meaning in the Hebrew of majesty. It says in the last verse of Psalm 8, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name above the heavens. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set the glory above the heavens. His glory is above the heavens. He is majesty. He is majestic. Would I say to someone today. So would I say something to someone the rest of this week. Would I make mention that hey. We had this little drama. This little thing about skits. And the production team at our church. And they did beautiful. And everything came out. And the title was witness his majesty. And, And I was thinking to myself. Wow. God is majestic. Jesus is majestic. The majesty of God, the divinity of God. I've never thought about it as much as I thought about it today. And I need to think more about it. I need to pray more about it. I need to consider it more. That's when you would probably spend a little more time in God's word. When you considered how majestic he is. And how necessary he is for you and for me. 
the innkeeper's son. He witnessed a father who just simply made room. He witnessed a father that made, he just, hey, father, pop, pop made room. Wow. He witnessed a father make room for his majesty. And as the little skit portrayed very simply, in just three or four minutes, he's showing how the attention wasn't on him. The attention wasn't ever on Pop. What did he say? He walked in with blankets and water and handling it, made me, he, he bailed me out. He was doing what he always did. Here's a quote I loved out of the innkeeper's son. But you could never convince Pop that he was a hero that night. No, I would still hear him. He'd say, boy, all I did was make room that night. The hero that night was God coming down to save us all. He's the hero. God's the hero. Psalm 104, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and O my, excuse me, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Look at that verse right there. He is what? Clothed with honor and majesty. He's titled, O Lord, my God. Thou art very great. People are going to extol all the quarterbacks on TV today and say that they're all great, and then they're all not so great. And almost raise them up, some of them, through a place of glory and grandeur, and he's going to take us to the Super Bowl. My gosh, how sad for us that we would recognize a football player that ha would have grandeur. They have nothing compared to the majesty of the Lord. What are we thinking here? You say, that doesn't happen to me. It happens to all of us. Forget about put the football aside. We put so many things in a place of grandeur that's called idolatry. Has anybody ever wrestled in their lives with idolatry in their own hearts? Yes, we have. And Psalm 104 is beautiful. It says in the middle of it, O Lord, how manifold are thy works, and wisdom thou hast made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. <laughs> oh my. The grandeur, the glory, the majesty of God. Joseph, he comes into play here. He witnessed an angel confirm God's plan for his majesty. Did God really have to do that? God could have gone and said, angel, why don't you just be quiet and be obedient? God gave such a grace gift right here. He brought the message of the truth and let Joseph know it's okay. This woman, Mary, you're espoused to, is doing the work of me. She has been set apart. Joseph says in that little quote I picked up here, because it's like that dream I had. When every bone God built me with doubted Mary, God sent an angel to get me through. How many of you doubt? Doubt God's hand upon something doubt a brother or sister in the Lord who's living by faith and doing the right work and yet you want to jump or I want to jump the gun it took everything Joseph said to let you in it took everything sending the only begotten son from majesty to majesty it says in Psalm 21, His glory is greater than thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. His name is called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. He is our salvation. Jesus' name means Savior. Jehovah is salvation. This is Jesus' name. His rec he is recognized by holy God. And it says in verse number 5 of Psalm 21, His glory is great in thy salvation. It says in verse number 6, For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Oh my, this is majesty. Worship his majesty. It is majestic. It gives us a point in reference of going, How do I really see God? Who is he? 
the shepherd's wife. The last two here. The quote that came out of this woman who witnessed a husband share the good news of his majesty. But he was given the greatest edict in all the land, the world actually, called to the front lines by God himself to proclaim the good news. Psalm 145. Consider this before I read a little bit of Psalm 145. You and I are the shepherds. We're to speak of him. We're to come back in from the how in the house from the day and go, I had a chance to say glory to God in the highest. Peace, goodwill among men. That Jesus Christ came to this earth. What a great time of year to have that talk with someone and another talk and another way. You see, you and I witnessed his majesty. Now, will we witness his majesty? I will speak. This is, this is a declarative from David in his psalm of praise. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Wouldn't that be neat if our conversation, our time, our interaction with people would be just like that? I was asking God to forgive me for spending time yesterday with my wife and interacting and at a certain time and all I was doing was just kind of, it wasn't really even a place of bad or good, recounting some things and going, wait a minute, you were right there in every bit of it. You've always been right there. You've always been majesty. You always continue to be majesty. Oh, please forgive me, God, for not speaking of your glorious honor, of your majesty and your wondrous works. Psalm 145, you can read that one and dance for joy all day long. And our last thought is for our wise man. Our wise man witnessed the baby bring divinity to earth as his majesty. Wow, that baby became a child and this wise man shows up. And the quote that comes from him, then I saw him. I felt a fascination, something un unmistakable, something I had never seen with my own eyes. Can you imagine? Divinity. Divinity. Well, you can only imagine what it will be like one day when you're in glory. And you will see him and behold him. And you will see the divine one, the majestic one. Oh, to see it like that. I see it through the word of God in Psalm 148. And there's so much again. Here's another psalm that in verse number one it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise ye him, all his angels, praise ye him. All the hosts, praise ye him, sun and moon, praise him, all ye stars. God likes to repeat himself when it's important. I guess that would be pretty important to praise him. Maybe it's something that has to be ingrained deeper into us to see God as majesty. Verse number 13 says, it's up on the screen, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. We heard that and read that again in another psalm above the heavens. You see, clearly, when you think of his majesty, and you just see those two simple words, his majesty, you say, majesty, what's majestic to us? Do you see God as being majesty? Do you see Jesus as being majesty? Ma Majesty? Do you see? When we do, oh my, it just floods your soul. So the question for our invitation time is this. If we never experience the majesty of Jesus Christ, how could there ever really be <laughs> any witness? If
if I don't very simply see him as majesty, then I will not witness his majesty to others. How sad a life I will have. And an awful accounting I would have at the judgment seat of Christ. I need to get my act together. How about you? Please bow for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come to a precious time, and it's all been so good the last few minutes. We sung some beautiful, beautiful words, dear Father. We've exalted the name of you, Jesus, and I thank you. And as we come to this time of prayer and invitation, we're reminded of all the words we've read from your scriptures, from Hebrews to Luke to Psalms. And they all point to the majestic one, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this morning of us having the opportunity to witness his majesty. May you, God, now get upon our hearts, in our hearts, on our minds, hearts, souls, to really respond with witnessing and being a witness after we have witnessed your majesty. God, get a hold of our hearts in Jesus' name. Please stand.